Hey everyone, welcome to my 2023 Fellowship Summit Project. Um, if you don't know me already, my name is Anaya and I was this year's Community Health Fellow. So today I'm bringing you this video to talk about something that I didn't even really know existed until I filled this position as a Community Health Fellow, which is home toxins. They exist everywhere in every home. In some homes, they're more prominent than others, but I'm just gonna get into what they are, how they affect us, and how we can kind of start to prevent them in our homes or like just lessen them so they're not affecting us as much. But yeah, let's get into what home toxins are. So household toxins are any substances that are found in households that can be harmful to humans when inhaled, touched, or ingested. So many household toxins or poisons, and I'll be using those interchangeably throughout the video, exist in our everyday lives. And like I said, I didn't even know about most of these until I filled the role as the Community Health Fellow. And yeah, they exist in our households and I didn't even know they were there, yet alone how to avoid them and just protect myself against them. So let's get into some of the more common and relatively dangerous household toxins that exist in people's homes. So some of the more common household toxins can be found in forms of cleaning products, solvents, which is basically anything that can dissolve anything. So water is a form of a solvent because it can dissolve things and pesticides, but also building materials, cookware, shower curtains, furniture, carpet, and so much more. So it's very clear to see, just based on the list I gave already, that household toxins do exist in a lot of general household items, and that's why they're specified as household toxins. They can be found in almost any household, and that's why I wanted to give you the resources on how to combat these toxins and which ones to look out for just in case you're experiencing the effects of them. So let's talk about how these toxins can be harmful to humans, because I can't just call them toxic and not back it up. So let's take something that majority of people have in their home, cleaning products, as an example. This can be things such as air fresheners, chlorine bleach, detergent and dishwashing liquid, and dry cleaning chemicals. So as I regularly do chores around my house, I do end up noticing the big labels on the back of some of the things I just mentioned, like air fresheners or, you know, toilet cleaners that say, do not do this, do not do that, keep this away from this, keep this in a certain temperature, things like that. And these warning labels are there for a very, very important reason. I mean, of course, no one should be going around putting air freshener on their skin or drinking it, but they're there for other reasons as well. So a big reason these labels are there is to warn us of what these household toxins are and what they can do to our bodies, the air, and how they affect us in general. And with that, they should also give a leadway on how we can... Leeway? Is that a word? Leeway? Leadway. Leadway? And with that, they can also give a leadway on what we can do to prevent the side effects. So here's an example of what I'm talking about now. This is a Clorox disinfecting wipe bottle. And on the back of them, as I turn them around, I can see in bold letters, precautionary statements, hazards to human and domestic animals, caution in bold letters, and storage and disposal in bold letters. So while looking at the back of this label, the thing that catches my attention the most is the way that it tells us that this specific cleaning material is a household product that can irritate the eyes or throat or cause headaches or other health problems. So I know I use Clorox for instance, but like Clorox, many other cleaning products, almost all of them have this warning label on the back of their product. And this is because some products release dangerous chemicals, including something called a volatile organic compound, which can be called a VOC. So what is a VOC? VOCs are chemicals that vaporize at room temperature. So let's touch more on VOCs um, and continue to use the example of Clorox disinfecting wipes. So as you're using these wipes, when you're putting them on your desk, the smell of them is going to vaporize in the air, creating these VOC levels. And VOCs are directly linked to indoor air quality. So if you're constantly using these products in your home and they have these scents and smells, they're getting into the air and affecting your home air quality. And speaking of air quality, I wanted to take a second to touch on the correlation between environmental justice and household toxins. So cleaning products, which would be a home toxin, and indoor air pollution, which would be environmental justice, go hand in hand. VOC levels do rise in your home when you use cleaning products, and depending on the products you use, your VOC levels could be higher or lower. As the VOC levels in your home rise, you are more susceptible to respiratory issues. So to reiterate, household chemicals release VOCs that can cause negative health effects to humans. As previously mentioned, these can cause headaches, eye and nose irritations, respiratory illnesses, and some products, even handled wrong, can create gases that can lead to chronic breathing problems and even death. 
So depending on the products you use and sticking with cleaning products, the VOC levels in your home could be higher or lower. So an example of this is, say you're using Windex versus green cleaning products such as Method, the VOC levels in your home when you're using things such as Windex are gonna rise just because they aren't green cleaning products. So green cleaning products such as Method are naturally derived, they're non-toxic and they're biodegradable, meaning they have less of an impact on the environment, including our home air quality, as opposed to things like Windex, which you know may cause a little more disruption in our home air quality. So let's discuss some solutions on how we can avoid having higher VOC levels in our home that correlate to indoor air quality. So one of the biggest things to note about household toxins is that most of the times if you use a product correctly and infrequently, you should be safe. So often it's about how much you're exposed to a product that can make the chemical harmful. The amount that is safe varies from each substance. So this is why I was talking about green products and why they can be beneficial for when you're cleaning your home, just so you can have that option to use them more frequently without having to worry about the indoor air quality of your home being jeopardized. And I think one of the things about green products that kind of throws me off is the fact that they are more expensive than our everyday common, you know, Windex and Clorox. And it's always sad to me to see that when we want to lead a better life, we always have to sacrifice our wages for that. So this is just a quick edit, but I wanted to get some of the fellows' opinions on the topic I just mentioned as well. So I sent out a survey to all seven fellows um, about home toxins. So the first question I asked on the survey was, do you typically use green or regular cleaning products more? The responses I got showed that six out of seven fellows use regular cleaning products more. I then asked the follow-up question being, would you switch to green cleaning products knowing that it can improve your indoor air quality even for the extra cost? I got a unanimous yes from all seven fellows saying that they would switch to green cleaning products knowing that it can improve their indoor air quality. However, I also got a unanimous response saying that the cost of green cleaning products being more expensive could definitely turn all seven fellows away if not just stop them from using and buying green cleaning products at all. And from this question, I got a great response from our regional air quality fellow, Nicole, that I would like to share with you guys. Nicole says, and I quote, I would be more inclined to buy green cleaning products knowing that it improves indoor air quality. I didn't know or really consider that they can harm your health or home environment. I think cost would play a role in it for me though. To be honest, I do see myself sacrificing my indoor air quality for the sake of convenience or cost, but it depends. And once again, that was from our regional air quality, Nicole Hong. I really like that answer. It basically sums up how a lot of people, I think, think about just switching over to alternative options, given that sometimes they can be more expensive and how it kind of just turns us away from them in general. But I did want to go over and touch on some other alternatives that you can use. Either way, if you have small children or would just like a better alternative option than your everyday cleaning products that aren't green, there are alternatives. So literally just baking soda will clean your tubs, sinks, and surfaces sufficiently while keeping the risk of home toxins at bay. So this pretty much concludes the rest of my video. I want to thank you guys all for watching. I hope I could have taught you a little something more about home toxins, or if you already had a basis knowledge, hopefully I could have given you a little more. Um, and yeah, once again, thank you guys for watching.